Hello, hello, welcome, 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 everyone. Check me. I think this is cool. Let's just do. Uh, maybe actually, let's do some. Uh, let's do some kind of pattern work like that on the nose there, and then we're actually gonna colour the whole thing in in black. West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. Life is only older than So I definitely want a lot of kind of dark areas, like black work, so that's what I want to do this. What's up, Handy? How's it going, Shredder? Shredder in the house. <laughs> Thanks for joining, guys. If you haven't already, please do share this out. It's a bit of a, a late night art sesh, but um, again, you know, I just wanted to work on this and see where we could take this. Just, there's no rush, but I want to get this done by the end of the week. So, uh, well, let's get all the black stuff, so black work done. What up, Asha? Yo, Asha, check me out. Two days in a row. I'm live on Periscope. You know? <laughs> the artwork's my Mandela, yeah. Mandalas are a beautiful form of artwork. Three is a charm. Oh, I don't know. Let's, let's just take one step at a time, shall we? <laughs> do you use a ruler to get the spacing? Uh... Yeah, so what I do with the ruler first is, and thanks for sharing guys, appreciate it, is I draw a rectangle. Can you see this rectangle underneath? Um, I always draw a rectangle, as you can see in all of my artworks, and I draw the whatever character I'm drawing over that. And then I draw a line in the middle, and that just kind of helps me get the... Uh, Perspective, angles, symmetry, slightly symmetry, you're like, this one I don't want it to be uh, exactly symmetrical, so hence the reason we'll work on this side. And even though I'm going to get the proportions right, I'm going to add different elements to this side. So this is kind of the element part where I'm just going to start to add pattern work a little bit to the left side and uh, start blocking out black colours because it's, it's really nice and powerful when you get a bit of black with ink first before adding colour I've been trying to get elephants right for a while now oh, okay. Yeah, you know what, it's just practice. It definitely took me uh, a bit to practice, but once you practice, it's it's right. Like that is all freestyle. All of that, like, all I drew on this side is, um, <coughs> all I drew is uh, that rectangle, a line in the middle, and then everything else was freestyled. So you just basically, by eye, you tend to figure out the shapes and stuff. Do you leave a signature in them, or is the is the box your signature? I do leave a signature right then. So all originals do get signed. Normally on the left here, right below the grey box. Here. <coughs> I know, right? In either, like, you can actually get these prints from my website. I do sell these at a very affordable rate. Um, and they are very popular. I've sold these prints, A3 versions, all over the world. Even larger versions. Mandy Jersey was amazing. Jersey was very cool. It's a very interesting uh, country, Jersey is. Very small. Uh, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Very, very nice place. Yeah. So I really enjoyed Jersey. I. Um, it was amazing, like, I had one of the best uh, sponsors I've ever had because the CEO really, like, took advantage uh, of, of the fact that I was there, which is great. Um, and um, kind of took me around, showed me the ropes, told me all the ins and outs of, uh, of Jersey and all sorts. Yeah, you know what, you should definitely go if you're ever down this area, pop into, uh, pop to the UK. 
pop over to Jersey, head over to Guernsey, have a head over to France while you're there. You know, might as well. Um, doing this. So let me get a piece of paper and show you, tell you the difference between painting and drawing. Right, one minute. So. <laughs> <laughs> Shake, eh? So yeah, um, I had a lot of fun painting and also what was really cool about Jersey is that it might sound a bit weird but I wasn't actually with the rest of the artists painting my uh, my griller although I did visit them um, I had my own painting space all to myself which meant more room I was based in the financial district, which meant people were walking past and very intrigued in what I was doing. And uh, intrigued as in there's a turban bearded guy on the island <laughs> and the fact that I'm painting a, a massive gorilla, a very colorful gorilla. So there were a lot of very intrigued people on the island, which is very interesting. <coughs> Did I finish off the peacock? What peacock? What's up, Andrew? Long time no see. How's it going, dude? Actually, you know what? I want to paint the colour on this. I'm really, really good, thank you. Enjoying life. Uh, and now sat in my studio, just chilling, talking to you guys, working on a new sculpture. So that's exciting. Did you do like a massive peacock? No, I didn't. The window, what are you on about? <laughs> I did a, a canvas peacock, but that was ages ago. That's sold and that's living in America right now. You were sanding it down last time I tuned in. I have no idea what you're talking about, the window. I've never done a peacock. You mean a sculpture? No, I've never done a peacock sculpture. I've only done... Um, this year, elephant, wallaby, gorilla, and uh, all, all the woolly in Scotland. The peacock flew to the States, yeah. Um, Dorinda, I think uh, maybe eyes checked, you know. Seeing as you don't already know the difference between painting and drawing, I think we should just stop there and, uh, and kind of get your eyes checked. Maybe it was an elephant. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Guys, don't sand uh, peacocks. It's not right. They uh, squeal like a witch, <laughs> like a banshee. <laughs> Need to look up a sea dragon. What's a sea dragon? I'm gonna look up that right now. Sea dragon. Sea dragon. Isn't a sea dragon a seahorse? Oh, it's kind of like a seahorse, but it's even more crazy whoa it's kind of like got loads of plants on it it's very cool at camouflaging sea, sea dragon <coughs> so you don't know the difference between an elephant and peacock well i mean you don't know the difference between drawing and painting so i'm not surprised that you don't know the difference between an elephant and a peacock <laughs> Yeah, so I've done a seahorse, but my interpretation of a seahorse, which is this, and it's called Poseidon 2.0. So Poseidon, king of the sea, god, that's named after that. But um, a sea dragon is a bit different. I just came to say hello. All right, cool. Thanks for popping in. God, oh, sore throat still. <coughs> I had a fascination with seahorses when I was a teenager. Oh, awesome. Are you sure you drew a seahorse in your maths book or did you draw um, a hedgehog? You could do it. I could do a seahorse, you know? Sea, sea dragon, sorry. Sea dragon looks awesome. <laughs> Dorinda, you know everything that you say right now, I'm just going to second guess it. And when you say to me, hey, Amrit, I've got an exhibition, right? Uh, for like Asian women and cars and it's on Saturday. I'm like, hang on. Are you sure? Are you sure it's not like Pokemon cards? It's like people, like school kids playing Pokemon cards. And it's actually in like, in America or something. <laughs> Just second guess everything. What up Pops, how's it going? For some reason I think your drawings would make cool stickers. It would make cool stickers. Rick, 
I do want to um, I do want to create stickers I do want to create stickers um, so every time I kind of go to art markets and uh, even on, on my Instagram I get a lot of people some people a lot of, most people ask for stuff and a lot of people demand for stuff I don't get it I don't get what um, why people think that they can demand me to produce artwork or products weird but I take it on anyway it's consideration <laughs> <coughs> yeah you know what stickers I've done uh, so what's really popular with uh, at art markets is my postcards these like kids love these and a lot of parents buy these postcards for their children um, to hang to stick on their walls uh, a lot actually buy the full print but also the uh, the postcards so yeah I think stickers will be the next step if I was to get stickers like which ones do you think I should do? And the coloring book, yeah. Like, I definitely, obviously, lion, elephant, peacock. You're pretty, yeah. So everyone, Mandy in this broadcast, Shredder, aka Shredder, who's from Australia, but she's really from Northern Ireland, uh, has the A1 version of. Is it this elephant? Isn't it? Uh, she has an A1 version. So the, the version that she has was actually a previous exhibition piece. Um, is beautiful. Perhaps coloring book style postcards. Ooh, a coloring book style postcards. Never know what stick would catch on. That's true, Rick. That's true. Uh, you know what? They're all awesome. Dorinda, thank you. That's what I was waiting for you to... Uh, to say that um, okay so this is something that I, I last year I teamed up with a, a, a brand in the UK an art brand and it was about creativity and courage um, and what I did I produced uh, a series of lion coloring pages A5 and uh, this is what I've still got the odd few left so what I might do is do a few of these I might do a few of these again. So this is actually A5. I could do A5, or I could do it this size, A6, half of this. And uh, it's just cool because that's that's that line artwork of mine, which I've drawn again into vector, so people can color it in, obviously. And uh, this whole theme was called um, Creativity Takes Courage. So that's cool. So I think I definitely want to do something like this again. Hey, what's up, Wolf Sister? Oh. What? We've got a lot of wolf people in this broadcast. We've got Wolfman, Wolf Sister, Wolf Poppy. We just need Wolf Cheese. <laughs> that sounds weird. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think of that when I said that, before I said that. My mouth spoke, my brain did not process it first. <laughs> Thank you very much, Wolf Sister. Hello! Okay, um, yes, uh, Mandy, the foil ones look amazing. So what I'm doing is I'm in the process of actually turning these into foil artworks. What I've done first is the deer artwork, the stag, uh, stag artwork here somewhere. I can't find the stag artwork. Let me show you the stag artwork, guys. So. Sell stickers and hold out on what makes it rare so they can buy it. Ooh, I like that idea. So there's a stag. This one. So this is actually the stag artwork. And what I've done, this is the first one that I've done and turned into foil artwork, which is very, very cool. So this is a foil artwork. This is available on the website, so uh, you can get it as a print only, or you can get it framed in this beautiful Geneva white ridged frame. So this this full artwork is the full version of this drawing which I drew, um, which is really cool. So I'm actually really excited, and obviously I've added a few other extra deets here, you know, 
the geometric patterns here and here. So I'm actually really excited about adding, uh, turning all of these into full artworks actually, eventually. So, um, yeah. That line, line is very cool. That line is very, very cool. Okay, let's get back. Drawing. Yeah, the frames are really nice. Like, like I do on these, are they using color tone markers? <coughs> the difference between color tone markers and paint markers is one's transparent and one's opaque. saw it anybody seen it it's so cool it's so weird uh let me show you let me show you uh so not only did my sponsors send me a picture of it but a few other artists just emailed me and tagged me in, in pictures and i was like that's so cool so this is my uh wallaby one minute 
This is my wallaby on a cupcake. How cool is this? No, I, I wasn't there. This was at the preview event in uh, the Isle of Man. I wasn't there. So people sent me a picture of it. That's my wannabe sculpture on cupcakes. So this is a little sneak preview for, for you guys. This is what my wannabe looks like, but you'll be able to see a lot more detail when I share it on my Instagram, the, the real version. I know, right? Too cute to eat. I did say to them that um, I want you to save it for me when I arrive in like a month or two months time. <laughs> Yeah, that might not be uh, edible, but you know. <laughs> Cook it now, I'm not gonna do that. You always have such intricate art. Uh, yo, CT Tom Thompson, I haven't even started yet. Yo. Yeah, exactly. Encase it in a glass bo a box. Um, and just keep it like that forever. Um, so that, how cool is that? It's just like, imagine people, I think they only chose four um, uh, wallabies to put onto cupcakes and mine was one of them. And I wasn't even there. Like I wasn't even there to be like, yo, put up people, you're eating my wallaby. Like that's just, I'm gonna call better, right? That's animal cruelty. I, I couldn't even do that. Like all these cool jokes that I could have done on the Island Man scaring all these white people. Um, I couldn't even do it. Luckily, well, that was actually probably lucky I couldn't, I didn't. Didn't you also say you have, uh, yes. Asha, I've had, uh, I've got a lot of my artwork tattooed on people. What up, Alex? How's it going, Crackers? Crackers, how was, uh, your holiday? Did you just learn to draw like that? Or was, uh, it, it was natural. It seemed like it was natural. Um, but with a lot of practice, a lot of patience, a lot of, uh, Experimentation. I got to this stage. Did you get royalties? Uh, no. When I when we uh, work on projects like that and we sign a contract, in the contract it states uh, they can, they're allowed to use photographs of our wallabies for promotional purposes. So that's something that we sign uh, before we even start the project. All right, take easy, dude. Thanks for being here, CT. Which is fine. I, I've got nothing against that. Completely fine. It's only when they use your designs and they don't tell you. Um, so there's this another sculpture project that's happening in London right now, and they used my submitted designs on the artist pack, and they didn't tell me. Um, and their communication has been terrible. Like so bad. Like areas that are not black. No dingoes, no. Can function, yeah. Oh, you know what? I like this. I like this whole um, black parts, black ink. It's cool. It works really well. I feel like there should be two of these. One more here, or one more here, one more here. I think there should always be one, maybe two. Yeah, let's do two. What? Oh, wait, what happened? <coughs> I think I'm gonna do another leaf kind of shape here. Uh, yeah, that'd be quite cool having like another leaf shape there. An overlapping one. Thanks for joining guys, appreciate every single person here. 
Uh, I the last time I did a live stream was or yesterday, but before that was in Jersey, and then before that was in Scotland, and I didn't really have time to like do any art or have a conversation because I was painting a, a gorilla. But I did watch comments afterwards, so thank you for those amazing comments. And uh, and it feels really good just to be back in the studio, just working on some cool artwork. <coughs> What's up, Sneema? Good evening. And uh, this, I like the fact that we're adding. This every time we add more more pattern work and um, more black elements it starts to really come to life looks like husky yeah would it mint you are leaving the eyes again for the end yes of course always you should know how I work now Salima but this is the first time when I have worked on an, an animal artwork but I'm working half of it before I work on the other half I've never done that before normally I always do the basic outline of everything and then I start adding the pattern work <coughs> I bought the book drawing with the right side of your brain I'm hoping it will teach me to ah oh, oh, cool right on the text is more alive yeah You know what? Um, I always say like to like to people, like reading about the, the mindsets and different parts of the brain is brilliant. But the only way really that you're gonna learn to be more creative is just to keep practicing, experimenting, failing, not working on stuff which doesn't quite work out right, things that you don't understand, things that you'll have to pause and come back to in like a week's time. No, no, not more than that really. Um, I yeah. It's cool. I've studied different, like, psychology of, uh, of... All right. Ronnie O'Sullivan is uh, one of the greatest snooker players of our generation. Uh, that's a guy that you can tr uh, call a true genius because geniuses are nuts, like, absolutely insane. They have their genius moments, but they personality is very much broken uh, and this is the case with a lot of uh, genius individuals they have uh, a dark side to them they have a, uh, an anger side to them they have a brilliant side to them they 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 constantly at battle with themselves internally and Ronnie also was a person just like that I wasn't at home but I was really bad enough okay, so here for one more night oh no Rafiz take it easy Take easy, rest. Yeah, they're like perfectionists, exactly. And when they don't do something right, they do take it out really hard on themselves, more than anyone, you know? That's the... I feel like, do I want to do this all the way in? Do I want to do this all the way here? I could do. X-ray and scan tomorrow. Oh, okay, awesome. We'd love to get one of your drawings and tattoos. Thank you very much, Kno Caller ID. <laughs> it's insane how many tattoo requests I get on my Instagram, and how many people do just get my artwork tattooed on them. At first, it was very weird. I still do find it a little bit weird, but it's flattering as well, you know. Do I? I mean, two minds at the moment. Do I? join this up with this or do I have them as separate yeah it is flattering yeah okay I'm just thinking what do I do what do I do do I just this layer here the back layer I feel like I want to attach so it looks like your body is taking time to adjust to your new kidney
Um, yeah. What was it? The theme was what is the home? What is a home? What does a home mean to you? And so I spoke about my journey of helping the, with the refugee crisis in uh, in Kos, in Lesvos, in Greece, in the Calais Jungle, Dunkirk Refugee Camp, Berlin. And it was about my personal journey, about how I saw these individuals as homes, and, uh, and then also share stories, very powerful stories about them. What up, Abbas? Yeah, it was my human, humanitarian stuff. So it was definitely an amazing achievement. You know, I never thought I would have done a TEDx talk at this point in my life. I definitely would. I definitely didn't uh, prepare for it. I never had it planned. Oh, I, I really like that. These are patterns. So if you just search for Mr. Async in YouTube, you will see. You'll see. Definitely give it a watch. It is. Uh, it's. It was published in uh, this last year. It was published February last year, and uh, it's always interesting because if I do it again, I can always. I was pretty happy with it. I was pretty happy with it. Every single one of us is blessed, blessed beyond measure. We have everything at our fingertips. We have the opportunity to buy whatever we want. The best home, the best cars, the best clothes or the best phones. Now the interesting thing it's about a two year old me. We also have judgment. This was really interesting because this was very, very early in my public speaking career. Two years ago. Like now, obviously when I'm doing public speaking I'm a lot more confident. But uh, I was pretty happy, you know, as, as my one of my first ever um, major public speaking gigs, and it was a TEDx talk. So, so yeah, it's it's available on YouTube. You can watch it and all that. Which is, it was cool. <laughs> yeah, it's ten minutes long, I think. So from that day, uh, looks like a friendly wolf. It is a friendly wolf. It's a, a very wise wolf. Yeah, it's on YouTube. So yeah, I'm, I'm proud of, of that. Like, just kind of being an individual who uh, got the opportunity to uh, Share my two cents in front of uh, in front of three hundred people, four hundred people. I can't remember how many. No, that was before I started scoping. I started live streaming back in twenty fifteen, and about a year later, no, two years later, I was on a TEDx stage. A year after I started live streaming, I was uh, doing the whole refugee campaign. Yeah. Well, Abbas, I'm an introvert as well. I'm a natural introvert. And, uh, however, over the last few years, I've had to learn extrovert skills to do what I'm doing. It's possible to be an ov an overt, is it? Is, uh, like, when you're a bit of both now? Like, I'm still, deep down, more of an introvert than an extrovert. I prefer just spending time in my own... What up, Adam? Long time no see, indeed. How's it going, dude? Uh, I still prefer kind of just spending my time by, my time by myself creating art, but um, but if I continued to be an introvert, then I would not be able to kind of stand in front of audiences, doing public speaking, present on, doing presenting stuff, doing video recording stuff. Uh, yeah, it would have been impossible to do all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I can. Well, you can learn to get your energy from both sides, you know. Like, I naturally get my uh, my energy from uh, positivity, from meditation, from mindfulness, from quiet and art and, and, and living in the moment. But I also actually now get energy from, uh, from people. That wasn't always the case. 
you know? My, that was never normally the case. I would, if I was in a room, like a crowded room, I would feel overwhelmed. But now, because I know how to work a crowd, I know how to go up to random people and have a conversation, I actually get really interested. I can get energy from meeting different types of people and, and be buzzing after it. So, yeah, I've learned to get my energy from both sides. But still, my number one source of energy is always going to be mindfulness. Focus on mindfulness, focus on being in the moment, focus on being lately flow. However, I used to talk about mindfulness quite a lot back in the days on Periscope. I used to do something called Time to Inspire, and I used to talk about mindfulness quite a lot in that. I haven't done so in a while. But my uh, CBBC um, recording was all because of mindfulness. We were talking about art and mindfulness and, and being in the moment, so that was quite cool. So it's cool that people recognize the stuff. I'm doing really, really well. Thanks, Adam. Really good. How was your bike ride? Well, no, you did it, didn't you? Fellow introvert here. How it practice makes perfect. Exactly. I'm trying to move towards mindfulness, but it's rough due to all the chaos. Exactly. It is. It's tough. It's not easy. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it and everyone would be at Zen. But it's not like that. We've got a monkey brain. We've got too much noise in our in our mind. But we need to practice mindfulness. To uh, and it is a practice. Your voice would be great for mindful. Thank you. Sometimes it's hard for me to, uh, but such applications help to be easy to talk to. Yeah, it's true. You can talk through uh, the internet and stuff. Hello, JJ. You remember Time to Inspire? Yes. I want to ask, do you have any charities that you work with? I, I do have random charities that I, I help on, uh, on, a, on a regular basis, yes. Who this? What up, what ifs? Who this? <laughs> uh, I did my bike ride back in August last year. I did really well, raised 300 and I'm doing more charity. Amazing. Well done. But I don't know what charity. How's, I'm doing really, really well, thanks, Brett. You know, usual, Brett taking over the world one doodle at a time. <laughs> Look at that drawing, I like it. Thank you very much. I am looking at the drawing as well. I'm doing it. Okay, awesome. Um, well, you know what? This year, I'm helping... Um, I'm helping uh, Doral Zoo Conservation Society based in Jersey. I'm helping St. Luke's Hospice in Plymouth. I'm helping... Another hospice on the Isle of Man. I can't remember who they are. I'm helping uh, Edinburgh Children's Hospital in Scotland. And I also hopefully will be helping Tusk Trust Charity. Tusk Trust, uh, who are a protection of lions, um, especially lions in Africa. So I'm actually helping um, this year five, I think. Uh, two hospices, one children's uh, hospital, one Doral Zoo, and one uh, animal conservation. Well, in fact, two animal conservation societies. A hospice for the wallabies, yes. I always prefer, and this is what I've learned though, I learned this when I was working with the refugee camp uh, uh, campaign, that I never want to work with large charities. <clears throat> I, as long as I can avoid it, I will. Because I know that most of my money that, or if I, yeah, pretty much most of my money that I raise will not go towards the end result. It'll always go to the admin. Um, because the larger the charity, the bigger the workforce, the bigger the admin, the bigger the expenses, the more money they have to raise just to keep themselves afloat. So, yes, a lot of the money goes into administration. This is what I learned. So, I was on the island of Lesbos in Greece. I spoke to quite a lot. Uh, I spoke to a lot of um, people who are on the island das who are volunteering for disaster relief charities and they kind of all shared how so many uh, of these charities about 10% of what they raised actually goes towards the end result like helping the refugees because most of it goes towards media costs, admin costs well even your ch charities would do though because even if everyone volunteers the people who run the charity 24-7, if it's their full-time job, they're not going to be, um, they won't be doing it as a volunteer job. If they are going to be doing it as a volunteer job, then it was, it's not really effective. The 
the, there's a lot of homeless people in the UK. People will probably say I have a learning disability. Why not a charity for learning disabilities but homelessness people don't have a good life? No, true, yeah. I did a whole campaign with homelessness, uh, folks on homelessness back in 2017. Yeah, it was powerful. We went to uh, did stuff in Birmingham and in London. Why are you wearing your jacket during the recent program recording when all the cameramen well, in Tisha's, does that line up with Rory's against winter? Yes, <laughs> it does. No, the reason being is because it was freezing cold in um, in this in that space. Um, so first of all, um, there was no natural heating in that space. So um, every time I took my T-shirt off, I was really cold, and it's really interesting. If you noticed, uh, well, you won't see because Holly's eleven years old, but Holly. The child, she had, uh, she came in a t-shirt. Everyone came in t-shirt. I had, I had my own t-shirt design, my own design t-shirt on, guys. My own lion t-shirt, which I was gonna like promote even more. So we all rocked up, and setting up, obviously we were warm, and then he got it was freezing cold, and so all of a sudden, the the eleven year old started to sneeze, like she sneezed a lot, and obviously for recording, that's not right. <laughs> so she put a big jumper on. The presenter put a big jumper on. I was cold because I was just in a t-shirt, so I put my orange jacket on. And it actually worked out nice. It looked quite cool. But that's the main reason why uh, I did. Yeah, well, the other people, they're just used to it, man. These are these guys who are like cameramen. You know what? Cameramen are like constantly out and about in t-shirts and shorts. It's crazy. But us, uh, us presenters aren't like that. <laughs> okay, you know what? I really like that. I really like these lines that we've got going on here. Let's let's do one more up here. Exactly, they're constantly in the elements. I know I need to toughen up, <laughs> but I was like, I was, I said to myself, and I actually said to the other guys, I said, you know what? I'd rather put my jacket on and know that I'm not going to sneeze and not do like loads of takes purely because I'm going to sneeze or my eyes are going to water. It's usually, yeah, it's usually hot if you're close to the lights, but the lights were behind us and uh, a bit further, further away. But that's how cold the room was. The room was proper cold. Because we were, we were basically in a, a massive white industrial room and the train passed above our head. So the reason why we had to also stop and start so many times is because every time a train went past over our heads, we had to do the take again. Comes out in six months or so. What What does? Oh, the, uh, the, the episode. Uh, yes, it should come out in the winter. How did you start this work? I, I started this work, so the story is, okay. I was walking in the woods one time and I noticed uh, a branch that fell right in front of me from a tree. The tree was about 256 years old, estimate, right? And the, tr and the, the twig that fell down was a shape of a wolf. And as I bent down to pick up this twig, this elemental spirit came out of the tree and said that with your inspiration of this twig, you need to draw a powerful, wise, feminine wolf. You need to start your whole animal brought, uh, collection up again this year. And I was like, whoa, that's so cool. So that's, that's, that's what happened. Did you put the uh, shirt on on the outside so to roll yourself? No, I didn't. On oh, right. But intelligent then has a different, there's different types of intelligence, you know? Cheesehead, <laughs> what a name. <laughs> that is Cheesehead. Sornum, everyone, guys, Sornum is actually called Cheesehead, so never call a Sornum, just call a Cheesehead. Um, yeah, so there's different types, of, like I said, different types of intelligence out there. And unfortunately, what happens with intelligence, but not just intelligence, but also talent. I know people who are intelligent and also people who have a lot of talent, naturally. Other quote which I share with people, uh, and the reason why I share this with people is because I want people to understand that even if we teach people, we still have got a lot to learn.
Thanks, we're all here. You, Lily, Lily, Laura, and Leah. What a... <laughs> what? Communication? I know, right? The only form of communication is social media where we just slate each other and block each other. Man, who wants to actually communicate with a human? <laughs> you crazy? Uh, being focused, just being focused on myself, but so happy to be here, brother. Do awesome, yeah. <laughs> Cheers, uh, Swift. Yo, I hope that you're not ducky anymore. You know? Oh, these songs are sweet. These are good acoustic songs, man. I'm liking these. Uh, yeah, good convo is one of the best ways to grow. Yo, Ninja, please, are you like running out of credits to send on your Nokia 3210? If you're running out of credits, maybe I can help you. Right, I'll give you 10p. And then you can maybe send two text messages and actually write in proper English. <laughs> maybe as a human, we all need this 
Maybe as a human, we all need this. No one is out this circle. Okay, Aurora. Okay, now that good. I turned off notifications for Facebook and I forgot I had it. <laughs> exactly. This is a stalker song. What stalker song? Who's stalking? Who's stalking you? Is someone stalking me? No. Who's stalking you? May I ask you? No need to be mean, man. I was just trying to mac mac combo. <laughs> Um, one thing, you know what, Ninja, please, I think you're new to me. One thing that you'll understand or eventually realize if you don't block me after this one broadcast, which is fine, is that uh, I sometimes, on the very odd occasion, use sarcasm. And what happens with sarcasm is that I kind of like say something, and if you're not sarcastically uh, on it, then sometimes you could associate it with being weak. Oh, as in literally, uh, yeah, the lyrics, yeah, yeah, exactly. The lyrics are very stalkerish, yes, I do agree with you, Pops. You said you like that song, so really, is so jealous. No, no, so you know when someone says they like the song, most people don't say it because they like the lyrics, they like the tune. And, and sometimes it's like what it represents, as in like when it was released, and the original song. So a lot of the songs that I like, it's because the tune's really nice. The, the the vibe is cool. I never do. No, Mandy, it's just on the odd occasion. How did you start the whole drawing thing? Oh, man. Aurora, Aurora, what's your name? <laughs> exactly, depends on the person. Very true. And when I look at this, it's... Um, yeah, paying attention to lyrics is good, but sometimes it's uh, it's good to just enjoy the music, enjoy the flow. Fajir, is it is it Fajr? Fa is it literally? Do you pronounce a J? Is it Fajr or Fajir? It must be Fajr. Fajr. Sarcasm should be banned. Why? Art is subjective. Yes. Just like the fact that I really, really like the Z at the end of your name, Abbas, because it makes you look so cool. <clears throat> I usually mean the lyrics, PCA. If you ever send me a song, be careful, I'm going to take the lyrics very personally. <laughs> yeah, okay. Everyone, just if you ever uh, send a mixtape to uh, Wolf Poppy, A, M, A, Z, I, N, oops, N, G. So that is what people now associate with sarcasm. If you're being sarcastic, it's like, you're amazing. So that's kind of how people now write in sarcasm. That's a fact. It's something which is really interesting how people now, especially children. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so if you ever see me writing like that, now you know why. <laughs> now you know why, um, why I'm writing it. Exactly. Bad dad is because you're not on TikTok. Thank you very much, Fajr. I had no idea. <laughs> See, everyone now, when you read that, you know they're being sarcastic. <laughs> everyone knows that straight away. Like, every time I see that text, I'm like, yo, are you being sarcastic? If you guys have a look on... Uh, have a look at TikTok. If you have a look at any comments on anyone, they'll either write the most popular, <laughs> really interesting. Um, the the comments that people now write, which are sarcastic, are "I'm first. So you know when people are writing, uh, when kids want to be first, first to comment on a video, and they write "I'm first. But what you'll get normally is "I'm first by 10, 20 other people. Right, and they'll say I'm first. So now people will always write it as I'm in a sarcastic way, where I I'm first, knowing that they're like six hundredth. Um, that was too many letters. That is hard to know, right? That was like interesting. Exactly, first, first, first. Um, another thing that people do is um, uh, kids now are jumping onto the idea that people use their body, for instance, uh, or do certain things to get views. Okay. And so what people write now, in, uh, and what, especially what children write, is they write, she, know, she knows what she's doing, or he knows what he's doing. And they always write it in a sarcastic way. So 
uh, alternate capitals and lowercase. And right, it's basically been sarcastic, which is like, she knows what she's doing, or he knows what he's doing. And it's just hilarious when you can pick up certain things that people are writing and that trends are changing. I'm still with it, you know? <laughs> I'm still with it. Born to be a patriot. Uh, no. I'm so interested. I'm sure you are. No, Mandy, I was first. What are you on about? <laughs> Anyway, you learn a lot of these stuff. <laughs> Amr is so woke, yes. There's a few other things I've noticed as well. But you know what? It does help me though. It helps me when I do talks uh, in primary schools or secondary schools. If I'm doing talks and I know what's trending and I talk about the trending stuff, it's funny because a lot of these kids are like, oh, he knows. <laughs> Right, like, yeah, I know. And then all of a sudden I'm cool. Because I'm like just with it. And I can have a conversation with them <laughs> about what's trending. You can't stop. There's probably a keyboard that does it for you. I don't think there is a keyboard that does it for you. You just, you know, have to put in the effort. Bad dad, come on. Stop being lazy. That's Knight Silverfling. What? Oh. Okay. Okay, so now what we're going to do is just start, start to... Let's do... Let's do... Let's do... Let's do some stuff here.
postcard you can actually get these postcards from there uh, i think it's like five pounds for four or five pounds for five i can't remember or you can get a print for 25 pound or you can get a frame for 35. i will save this broadcast yes you say one thing and they turn it into something else <laughs> just got told off by nurse <laughs> that's so weird yeah don't get into trouble if you do just blame miss tracing just like yo he lives in Birmingham, it's his fault. And they'll be like, oh, Mr. A Singh, that troublemaker. Yeah, if you watch a replay, the good thing is you can. Glorina? Less last year of your 30s. Oh, okay, so you're not that. So, uh, <laughs> So then you're like, what, seven years older than me? Uh, eight years older than me, Mandy? I don't really use the, uh, the, the native app. job oh guys did anybody watch the finale of uh, big bang theory it's finished it's over static follower like facebook instagram or twitter so it doesn't matter what follow you got whether, you, whether it's on uh, instagram live or uh, periscope or facebook or twitch or whatever it is 
the value of uh, a live streaming viewer is way more valuable than a, a static liker. I like that. Oh, this is coming together noisily. Noise. I like these. I like these lines that we've got going here. Look, can you guys see these lines? These lines. Like you can't quite see it in um, if when it's there. But you can see it a bit closer up. Very noise. But I'm really glad I, I, I invested so much time in Periscope because I wouldn't be where I am right now if I didn't. So, it's, again, it's all down to what you can get out of a platform, not what the platform can get, give you. Too often, we feel like this platform should be giving us something and we demand stuff from Periscope, which is ludicrous. You know? This platform should... Should, doesn't need to give us anything it's free right the question is what are you getting from it Twitter would be good for short form videos like TikTok not live content streaming yeah, yeah I don't know I think uh Twitter, remember Twitter did do short form videos, it was called Vine, Twitter owned it remember, but they didn't do well, and they didn't look after the content creators, so it failed, however long form does do really well on Twitter, like if people are watching NBA for instance, or uh, news, and it's live, it does very very well. Uh, I don't think short form would actually do well on Twitter at all because people are used to watching stuff and commenting and having a conversation it's a convers conversational piece yeah it's crazy to me when people are so get, exactly when see people get so angry in Periscope but it does my head in as well I'm getting free social entertainment yeah uh, other people's lives and views are so interesting yeah Periscope is a free app that has been a miracle for so many and at least free entertainment for more. Exactly! Very true. This is the reason why um, I have tried... In fact, no, I think I've done really, really well. I have avoided every conversation that people have tried to drag me into. <laughs> and trust me, there's a lot uh, of people tr who are trying to drag me into uh, anti like like really negative uh, talks of Periscope purely because of uh, what they feel like Periscope should be giving them and it does really it's sad it's, it is very very sad that's all I can say about it it's very very sad and that's not something that I want to be part of and I make it very very clear to these people that if you have a problem I'm not going to jump on your bandwagon and help you shout out about this purely because you are you've thrown your I don't dummy out of the pram your pacifier out of the pram for you Americans. Um, yeah, it's just stupid. It's absolutely stupid. But again, this is what I say to people. If you watch people just complaining and slating, remember you're investing your time in their negativity. Remember that. Every time you watch people slate and be angry and negative and complain about people and pull people down, you are investing your time, your mind, your your vibe, your emotion into that. Down to you. No one's forcing you to do it. As much as they're advertising, they could create be creative with the banner ad and pay the content providers. Yeah. If you argue with it for you, will lost argument already. Exactly. True. But it's something that a lot of people don't get though. Yes, totally. I've gotten involved twice in that kind of drama in hopes of helping a friend and both times I regret it. Exactly. Um, I learned very, very early on. I learned about this back in 2015. So you know when Periscope was very new? 
uh, and you were seen as an early adopter. I joined in one thing once, uh, just because I wanted to support a, a live streamer, and I instantly regretted it because people s started to associate me with like being positive and talking about stuff and and good conversations and also like time to inspire stuff and all of a sudden i linked myself myself with this person who was just being really negative and people were, like looking at me thinking whoa what's going on and so that i learned a lot from that i learned a lot from that to always stick to my guns and not fall into peer pressure and so I've done that, and yeah, people don't like it. There's people on this platform who don't like the fact that I don't get involved in arguments and stuff like that. I keep myself to myself, I do my own thing, and, and go on. Because I know that there's so much more to life than, than, than these things that people do on Periscope. It's just a small little thing, and people turn it into the biggest thing ever. So yeah, I've, I've definitely learned from it, and so I'm glad uh, you've also uh, found that as well, Pops. But again, we have to learn from it in our own way. Otherwise, sometimes we don't know. But if anybody here... I feel sorry for people who are like joining Periscope and getting involved in stuff like this. You ask me anything, Scope, for the jokes. <laughs> you know what? I need to do... Uh, should I do another Ask Me Anything? I haven't done any Ask Me Anything Scopes in a long time. In fact, I haven't done an Ask Me Anything in a very long time. Maybe I'll do an Ask Me Anything this week. It was fun. I do like when I just have a conversation about anything. Um, sometimes they just love the drama llamas, I know, right? I don't understand the Perry drama. Yeah, totally. People were like, what the hell, oh, puppy? But everyone gets mad sometimes. Nobody's perfect. No, exactly. It's true. You learn from it though, you learn from, uh, you learn how to handle that kind of anger and frustration. People are drama because their lives are empty, it's true. I think that's the reason why the most popular TV shows are reality TV. You know, it's because people love drama, no, yeah, people crave it, which is really sad. I don't remember when I signed up for Periscope, but it seems like it's been a while. Yeah. Yes, but no, Periscope has definitely changed a lot. Back in 2015, it was it was very different. Uh, a lot of us who were like called the early adopters were quite heavily involved with Periscope, uh, giving feedback and doing a lot of very, very cool stuff. And there was so much jealousy. Guys, so much jealousy in the early days. Like, there is a lot of jealousy right now. There's, I know there's people out there who don't like me because I'm, I'm doing well. Just absolutely don't like me on Periscope because I'm doing well. And I've never spoke to them. I've, I keep myself to myself, I do my own thing. And I find out through other people that people are talking bad about me because they just don't like me because of what, I, what I'm doing. I think a lot of people just get annoyed or angry. They're like, why is that person getting opportunities but I'm not? You know, people always think that, especially creatives. And so all of a sudden, I'm realizing that there's, there's creatives now on Periscope that have got this jealousy towards me. And I've never spoken to them. I've never, ever spoken to them once in my life. And you know what's even sad? Is I have been in their broadcast and I've shared uh, in, in their broadcast and I've like stayed and like bigged them up and given them really good uh, advice, some of them. Um, but yeah, I can't be in every single person's broadcast and every other creator's broadcast. But it's sad when I find out that they're... Uh, extremely jealous it just makes me uh, I feel sorry for them I feel really sorry for them but I feel like creatives are do this a lot creatives are very easy to uh, to be very jealous individuals because creatives love to not only do they don't like to share their content they're very private individuals and um These are old school tunes, yo. Do you feel my heart beating? Do you understand? Have faith, bro. <laughs> I know.
Have I seen a real wolf? Uh, I think I have. In zoo. Not in the wild. It's very difficult to see a wolf in, in the wild because they, um, they avoid humans. Oh yeah, no, I haven't actually seen uh, Wolf Poppy in real life. I don't actually know she exists. I don't even know she's real. Where can you find this playlist? On Spotify. If you search for acoustic covers, you'll find it. Do I do this whole beard like I did with the lion? I flick it to the left. Or do I keep it? That's really not in real life, no. Do I do it exactly like uh, symmetrical? So like, if I, I mean, I probably won't do the exact side on this side, like I might do it slightly different, but if I did, would I then do it down or would I do it curved? Closest into a fox would be a, uh, a wolf would be a fox, yeah? Very small version. Um, so let me think. Uh, if I have it to the left, then then that would be there. That would be there. That would be there. If I do it straight down, like quite sharp, then that would be really interesting as well. I think I do want some of this kind of style on this side, especially probably like here, just so you've got the shape. Uh, let me have a little think. I think I like the idea, in fact, you know what, I like the idea of this. If that, that is going to be the same, that's going to be the same. Let's get this kind of flame element. Just for people's life to be better, I've been helped all my life with learning disability. It's time to give back. Yes, exactly. If you can give back any way that you can, then I mean, you're doing what you were born to be, born to do. Your life's purpose to serve others. And make sure your lamb is tucked away in your fridge. <laughs> why? Um, first of all, I don't eat meat, but if I did, why would I make sure it was tucked away in the fridge? <laughs> I, I want to help with your goal too. I think what you do is help people. Thank you very much. I think it is as well. It helps with, definitely with... There's many ways that art can help. Relaxation, meditation, mindfulness. Gratitude, living in the moment, being courageous, being inspired, being curious, you know, all sorts. We don't know like what and how it's been, you're inspiring people, but I, I do know that it is in some way or, or form. Wolf would eat it. <laughs> Very true. The wolf would eat it. I don't think, I think, my wolf is a vegetarian, everyone. I'm just gonna put this out there. Okay, my wolf's a vegetarian. <laughs> Bad dad, the reason why you're so busy to draw because you're so busy making up excuses. The more excuses we make, the more busy we feel. Why? Because we've already told our mind that we were, we're preoccupied with, with procrastination. Well, I would like to keep to your yeah, promise. Do you remember what it is? Oh, my promise. Oh, your promise. Uh, your promise would be to meet me one day. That's going to happen, obviously. It's going to happen. His teeth are made to chew meat. Sorry, mate. Ah, this one's a vegetarian. This, this one's a vegetarian, dude. I do remember. 
course I remember. I just had a flashback to uh, the scope where you were you were in it and you were talking. I've been mind mapping my business recently. I got too much to do. Ah, uh, mind mapping a business is very dangerous. Do you know the big problem about mind mapping? Like Loughra or Leicester, you will have to let me know uh, where you like to me. Okay, cool. We got to move on. You go to Edinburgh City Council and uh, have a little look. Where is it? I, uh, George Street. Yeah, it might be George Street. Where is Edinburgh City Council? I did actually, you know what? I went there because they took me around and I didn't actually pay attention to where it was. It's a self contained cycle if you add chickens. What? Yeah, High Street, City Chambers, High Street. Let's have a look at maps. See exactly, George Street is the most expensive street. Is it? No way. Where else is that? I need to have a look now. So let's go to E1HY1YJ. 1YJ. So you've got. Uh, you've got. Um, where are we? High Street. Oh, okay, I see. That's that square, then, isn't it? There's like. It goes High Street. St. Giles Cathedral. Yes, they did say about the cathedral. St. Giles Cathedral, uh, Parliament Square, High Street. It's going to be near that area. I don't know where exactly, but I'm excited. I'm going to be heading back to Edinburgh. Uh, I can't go to the launch. The launch of the campaign is uh, in a few weeks' time. It's on the 4th of June, the launches. Um, I know, that's crazy, Julie. I didn't even know what all really was until uh, I was approached by them. Fish foods feeds the fish. Fish poop feeds the plant, and the plants clean the water. Whoa, that's a perfect micro cycle you got going on there. We just sort soon. Message you, uh, you know, I talk to me, support worker, wood money, Okay, drop me a few dates and I'll check my diary. I read it in the 70s and 80s. But you know what's really interesting, what I read about Old Woolly is uh, it was created by the same uh, illustrator as Dan, as no, uh, Dennis Menis. Uh, and so that's the reason why when I saw Old Woolly, I was like, hey, I recognize kind of the, the style of the characteristics because Dennis Menis is very much like Old Woolly. Uh, so that's the reason why I got that side but I learned a lot about that comic book while I was up there because obviously they say things like jinx and um, and I don't know Scott, Scottish slang and comic book slang and I was just like what like what are you on about <laughs> but he's better of course you would say that <laughs> that's fine so the launch of the Edinburgh campaign, the Edinburgh Trail, is going to be on the 2nd of June. I can't make it down. Um, and then it's officially going to be in public, I think, either a week later. Uh, no, 17th. 17th of June. Julie, 17th of June. Put that in your di diary. That's when you'll see all of the old woolies uh, around Edinburgh. 17th of June. Technically, you could feed the fish, chicken poop, and the chickens eat a plant that you grow. Man, that's confusing. I need the plastic in the water. Awesome. Well, there should definitely be one around where you live because there's been quite a lot. And Edinburgh isn't actually that big. I was surprised that I drove there. Yeah, oh, if you scope it, that'd be amazing. You'll definitely probably see it before me, but I am definitely going to head up to. Uh, I'm definitely going to be heading up to Edinburgh. Uh, probably that I might actually head up to Edinburgh and stay there like for a night or something or two to go and check out all the old woolies. So I might actually go during the week of the 17th. You know what? I might actually head up to uh, Edinburgh. I might fly over. I'm not going to drive. I'd rather fly. So if I go, I'll let you know.
We can hunt some old woolies together if you want. Uh, do you have a website? I think I can sort out with Town Hall getting your work in there. Can, oh, that'd be re that'd be cool. Uh, yeah, my website is Mr. A Sing. Dot stayed in Edinburgh for a few days, drove all the way back to Birmingham. It was uh, it was cool, yeah. And <laughs> thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Take it easy. Have a good day. I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna finish this layer area off, and then I'm uh, I'm gonna. Good night. It was like fire, I know, right? Alright, good night, guys. See ya.